bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me, I will bless his holy name. Come on, just right where you are, I dare you to lift up a sound in your living room, in your kitchen. Lift up a sound. If you're driving in your car, tell God how much you love him. Tell God how much he's been good to you. Tell him how much you adore him, for he is worthy to be praised. Good morning, New Zion, and we thank you so much for worshiping us one more Sunday. God took care of us all week long, and we're so glad that you decided to come and worship with us yet again. Listen, before we get started, I want you to do a couple things for me. I want you to share this video on Facebook. I want you to create a watch party. Invite somebody to worship with us this morning. Send a YouTube link to somebody you know. Call a friend. Do whatever you got to do. Don't let people worship God by themselves. Invite them in. Invite them in to worship with us. Listen. 1 Peter 5, chapter, 1 Peter chapter 5, I'll be reading verses 7 through 10, says these words from the New Living Translation. Give all your worries and cares to God, for he cares for you. Stay alert. Watch out for your great enemy, the devil. He prowls like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. Stand firm against him and be strong in your faith. Remember your family and believers all over the world is going through the same kind of suffering you are. In his kindness, God called you to share in his eternal glory by means of Christ Jesus. Here it is. So after you have suffered a little while, he will restore you and strengthen you, and he will place you on a firm foundation. Kind sir, we thank you this morning for your goodness and for your mercy. We thank you, God, for just reasonable portions of health and strength yet again. We thank you for just allowing us to be coming to this sacred space called sanctuary on another Sunday just to worship you. So now, Lord, we ask that you would just have your way today. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us this morning. Do something, whatever you want to do. Shake us and rock us for however long you want to. Bless every song. Bless the man of God that's going to be bringing forth the word on today. We ask you now that you have your way. We bind up the enemy right now. Every distraction, every demonic force, every, every satanic attack. We bind it up right now in the mighty name of Jesus. God, we know and we believe that you shall get the glory out of this. It is in Jesus' name that we do pray. Amen and amen. Come on, lift up, lift up your hands one more time as the praise team gets ready to come and bless us. And just say, Lord, I thank you this morning. Lord, I praise you. Come on, one more time. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I praise you. Hallelujah. We bless God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Come on, come on. Keep it going. Keep it going. We bless your name. Yes, we sing the praise to you, Lord. Have thine own way. Come on, tell him, have thine, thine own way. Yes, God. Yes, God, we love to call your name. Great name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, put those hands together. Right. 
keep calling his name. Keep calling his name. The one that turned your life around. Keep calling his name. The one that delivered you. The one that set you free. So for that reason, I will bless the Lord. For that reason, I will bless him. Yes, Lord. Yes, God. Thank you, Lord. Glory to Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God.
take it. Pour out your spirit. We need your anointing, Lord, in our churches, Lord. We need you, God. A whole lot of things is going on right now, but we know you have all power in your hand. You have all, all, all power in your hand. Most kind God, our ever-living, ever-present God, Father, pour out your spirit on us right now. As David said, Father, don't take your spirit away from us, God. We can live without our cars, our homes, our houses, our possessions. But God, we cannot go a day, an hour, or a second, dear God, without your spirit, dear Lord. So, Father, inundate us with your presence today, even right now, in the name of Jesus. God, show us who you are. Reveal yourself to us in a way that we've never seen you before. In the name of Jesus. And God, we will forever give you the highest praise, the most honor, and the most glory that you are richly due. We bless you right now, dear God. We bless you for this service. We thank you for this day and this time. We thank you for waking us up this morning and starting us on our way. Father, our hearts are overjoyed, dear Lord, right now, simply because of who you are. And we thank you, God, with everything inside of us, dear Lord, just for being that good God that you are. Yes, God. Father, throw our agenda out of the way right now. You take over. You take control. God, we're streaming right now in the name of Jesus. But, Father, you have your way in this place right now. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Well, good morning to everyone. Thank you all for joining us again for another uh, one of our 10 a.m. morning services here on Sunday. Um, we thank God for you. If this is your first time worshiping with us, we just want to let you know that we appreciate the fact that you planted your feet right where you are, in front of your computer, in front of your phone, or wherever you may be. Just the fact that you tuned in, we just want to say thank you. We realize you could be doing anything else that you want to right now, but we consider it an honor and a privilege for the simple fact that you've taken the opportunity to be with us here today. Now for you and for everybody that is watching, listen, meet us online. This is our touch point with you. We want to stay connected with you in every way, shape, or form. You can meet us on our website at www.insidenewzion.org, www.insidenewzion.org. Look around, look at our small groups tab uh, We or menu item. We actually have a place for each and every one of you just to stay connected with us. Now, if we were here in the sanctuary, this would be the moment that I would ask everybody here just to take an opportunity to love on somebody, greet somebody, give them a handshake or a high five. Obviously, we cannot do that right now. But what we can do and what you can do, pull out your phone and you can text somebody right now just to tell them good morning, you're thinking about them and you love them and you thank God for them. In addition to that, um, you can call somebody too. Or if you're sitting beside somebody at the breakfast table or the couch, just reach over beside yourself to them, love on them, hug them, nudge them just to tell them that even though they're here or right where you are, you thank God for them too as well. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to give you 60 seconds, 60 seconds to do this here in a moment. Now, um, just in case you get an opportunity to greet someone quickly, just want to put a reminder that this is a great time too also as well. If you can uh, squeeze it in just to give your offering to we appreciate the fact as a ministry, as a church, that you continue to sow into us. For all of our members, thank you for continuing to tithe, continuing to give. We thank you for that because we still have ministry to do. So we appreciate that. You can give online through our mobile app or you can come on any Thursday directly here to our church between 9 a.m. and 12 p.m. You can just drop off your offering or giving if you want to. All right. So now we have 60 seconds. Make sure you greet somebody, love on them. Ready, set, go.
good news you want to share? We want to celebrate with you. Email your good news to info at insidenewzion.org. Again, info at insidenewzion.org. Join us June 1st at 6.30 p.m. for Inside New Zion, an information session about upcoming events and volunteering with us. We had a great time in our book club last week, and it is not too late to join. We are reading the popular book, Soar, by Bishop T.D. Jakes. Our New Zion book club, Tuesday, June 2nd, at 7 p.m. Let's soar! Hey, what's up, New Zion? This is Reverend Patterson here. I wanted to take a moment and just invite all of the millennials uh, to our June the 2nd meeting at 7 p.m. Uh, you should have received the email with the Zoom information inside of it. I want to take a moment and just invite you. It is very important that all the millennials join us. We have some exciting things coming out that I want to share with you. Pastor wants to share with you, and we want to get it all out to you. Please, 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 if you are a millennial, come and join us, and I hope to see you there. All right, got to go. I guess Reverend Ramon is rushing to volunteer for a summer food service program. New Zion is a community site this summer, and we're excited because this is our first year! Free lunch will be served June 15th through August 14th from 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. Monday through Friday, kids 18 and younger are welcomed. New Zion, we want to be well by learning. Our virtual small groups are a great way to fellowship, build relationships, and gain biblical knowledge. At New Zion, find out more today at insidenewzion.org slash groups or at Facebook. New Zion, be well. We want to see you there. New Zion Class of 2020, we want to celebrate our 2020 graduates on Saturday, June 6th at New Zion with a parade in the church parking lot starting at 2 p.m. The entire church is welcome to come and celebrate with our graduates. The parade starts promptly at 2 p.m. So it is advised for everyone to be there by 1.45 p.m. There will be a divorce care small group for those that are separated, divorced, or contemplating it. It will be a two-week session starting on Thursday, June the 4th at 7 p.m. Check the website under small groups for further details. God is still in the praying, answering business. Pray with us daily at 7 a.m. Join us by calling 888-788-0099. Use the ID 813-5928-0399. Again, 888-788-0099. Use the ID 813-5928-0392. These are your announcements for this week. Remember to be well. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Come on, begin to say something to him. Glory to God. I'm free. No chains are holding me. I have my liberty. I'm free indeed. Ah, yes, God. So put a smile on your face. Yes. I'm free indeed. In Christ, I'm free indeed. No chains are holding me. It's who I choose to be. Hey, I'm free indeed. In Christ, I'm free indeed. No chains are holding me. It's who I choose to be. Everybody sing here. I'm free indeed. In Christ, I'm free indeed. No chains. No chains are holding me. Yes. It's sing it with us. Say, 
So for that reason, we bless the name of Jesus. For that reason, we honor him. We honor him. Hallelujah. Come on, let's sing it one more time. Sound free.
If you would turn with me to Galatians chapter 6, we're going to read from verse 9. And after that, I'll give you another scripture, which is Isaiah chapter 40. We'll read from verse 28 there. But for now, Galatians chapter 6, verse 9. Then we'll go to Isaiah chapter 40. And we'll start at verse 28. So in Galatians chapter 6, starting at verse 9, where the word of God reads, And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. I want to direct your attention to uh, the book of Isaiah chapter 40. And I'll be reading from verse 28 all the way down to verse 31. And assuming you already have that, what the Bible reads, Hast thou not known, hast thou not heard, that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding, for he giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increaseth strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young man shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. The title of the message here this morning is pretty simple. And I'm praying that this is an encouraging message for us all here today. And the word of God really this morning is as simple as for me to tell you, hang in there. Just hang in there. Hang in there. Father, I pray today that none of us will leave here unchanged. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And let us not be weary in well-doing. For we shall reap in due season if we faint not. You know, I love how the Bible says, let us not be weary in well-doing. So to understand what that means, first we must define what weary means. And by definition, what weary means is a feeling of showing tiredness, especially as a result of excessive exertion or lack of sleep. Now, if we're honest about it, we'll all agree that life many times will leave you tired. Life sometimes will put you in a position to where you feel like you're inundated, you're overwhelmed, and you have no more gas in your tank to give. Life will sometimes put you in a position or a situation or a posture sometimes to where you feel like you can't take it any longer. And it's for various reasons. It could be because of your children that are just running around and wearing you out. It could be because of a spouse that is wearing you out. It could be because of a job situation, a financial situation, a health scare, a mental thing. It could be friends, family. The list could go on and on and on. But if there's one thing that I believe that every blood washed believer under the sound of my voice could agree to is that we've all had moments in our life to where we've just been tired. And being tired doesn't feel good because it's a struggle to get out of bed in the morning. That sometimes you don't even feel like going to work. You don't even feel like getting in your car. And sometimes you don't feel like you have enough to get it going. But I bless God in the name of Jesus. Because what the Lord is telling us here today is that even in our tiredness, we have a God that says, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. And the word of God says, and I will give you rest. So I thank God right now that even in my times of being tired, that I have a God that never slumbers nor sleeps, that I have a God that is still looking out for me, that is in encouraging me and that is 
pushing me. And what the word of God is saying is that even when you get weary, don't give up. Especially when you're in a season of your life to when you're doing well. So the word of God is saying, let us not be weary in well doing. So one thing I want to give to you here today in talking about your weariness or your tiredness is first, you must challenge your tiredness. Now, what I mean by that, when you think about it, all of us have had the point in our lives to where we've made a decision that we're going to the gym. We're going to work out. We're going to start jogging. We are going to start getting fit and getting ourselves together. But I'm sure we would all agree, if you've ever been to that crossroads in your life, the thought is great until you actually get on the treadmill. And so you're good for the first 10 seconds and maybe even 15 seconds. But right at about 45 seconds to a minute, all of a sudden your heart starts beating fast. And now your breath is starting to increase and you feel like your lungs are losing air. And so all of us have to make a decision in that moment. Are we going to stop or are we going to continue? And so now here's the thing. The more you work out, the better you get. So now maybe you got tired at 45 seconds today, but come back tomorrow and then maybe you'll get to that 50 second mark and come back the next day and maybe you'll make it up to one or two minutes to where eventually where you used to get tired, you don't get tired anymore. But the only reason why you can overcome that is because you made a strategic decision to challenge your tiredness. And so now we may say, well, how do I challenge my tiredness when I'm on the treadmill and I'm sweating and my heart is starting to palpitate and my mind is telling me to get give up? Well, the way that you challenge your tiredness is you start speaking to it. Because when you start speaking to it, now your tiredness doesn't own you, but you own it. And because now when you start to verbalize and take authority over your body, over your tiredness, over your mind, then all of a sudden the things that used to hinder you don't hinder you anymore. And so now that means that we as believers have to understand that we are speaking vessels. And if I am a speaking vessel, I have to start speaking to anything that is opposing me. And I want to challenge somebody right now in the name of Jesus that you may be tired, but now you have to do what Paul said, where he said, let the weak say I am strong. Let the poor say I am rich. And to God be the glory that every one of us need to speak to our lives and say, I will overcome. I will get through this. I will walk victorious. I am a winner. I am the head. I am not the tail. I am above. I am not belief beneath that I am somebody. And because who I am and Jesus Christ, to God be the glory, start speaking to your tiredness, your weariness, and say, I am now strong. I'm not weak any longer. This thing will not defeat me. It will not win because who I am am in Christ. I am victorious and I always will come out on top. So now the challenge for all of us is that we have to challenge our tiredness, but you got to start speaking to it. And I want to encourage everybody here, start speaking to your tiredness so that you won't quit. Because if you quit now, you'll always quit. That's the thing about life is that when you get used to giving up this time, then it makes giving up a little bit easier the next time. That's why I always appreciated my parents because whatever I started, they said, you're going to finish. There was a time in my life to where um, I decided to play baseball, and, and baseball, I was just not anointed to play. 
And so I was horrible at baseball. I couldn't hit the ball if they just tossed it to me. For, to save my life, I could not connect with the ball. And so I remember after the third game when I struck out. And so I remember going to my parents and I said, I don't want to do this any longer. I suck at it. I'm horrible. I'm just not any good at baseball and all. And so my parents didn't argue whether or not I was any good because the proof was in the pudding. It was obvious that I was horrible at baseball, but what they told me is that regardless how horrible you may be, you're going to finish out the season. And so the reason why I appreciate my parents downloading that thought in my life is simply because as I was a young man then, but now I'm a grown man, there was times in my life to where I wanted to give up on many things including my own life and there was times to where I felt like maybe my marriage would not survive or maybe I could not stay in this job a little bit longer but then God took me back to that moment to where my parents told me you don't quit and you don't give up and so now it mustered enough energy in me just to cross the finish line so I'm encouraging everybody here right now up under the sound of my voice don't quit don't give up because if you give up now you'll give up again so now what the scripture is also saying is don't be weary in well-doing don't be weary in well-doing so here's the thing about well-doing well-doing is a seed because it says don't be weary in well-doing for you will reap if you faint not. So if I don't give up and I continue to do well, then eventually I'm going to reap a harvest of what I've planted. See, there's a spiritual law called seed time and harvest or sowing and reaping that whatever I put in, I have an expectation that I'll get it right back out. So if I put it in the ground, then eventually whatever I planted will come right back into me. But now by default, if I don't put nothing in it, I can't expect to get nothing out of it. But the word of God, what they're telling us is don't be weary in well-doing because your well-doing is a seed that is a harvest that one day you'll be able to pick up from but now you have to keep planting believing God that eventually everything that I'm putting down will continue to come up now I'm praying right now that this point will resonate with a parent that is on the verge of giving up on your child I want to say don't give up on your child and I'll even say don't even bend your rules over your children because if you continue to raise them the right way, they may give you a little bit of hell now, and they may give you a little bit more hell later, but eventually, by the word of Jesus Christ, and the Bible says the promises of God are yea and amen. So now if the word tells me that this is a promise of God, that if I continue to do well, then eventually my wayward child will turn themselves around. But I can't get weary and give up right now because I have to see the harvest of the seeds in which I have planted. I want to challenge a married couple right now to where now you feel like you're the only spouse that that is doing great things or anything for your marriage. Hang in there. Keep loving them. Keep encouraging them. Keep helping them. Keep praying for them. Keep looking out for them. Keep cooking for them. Keep picking them up. Keep doing all the things that you would normally do for your spouse. And to God be the glory, there will be a day and a time to where you will be able to reap and pick up from some of the seeds of the well-doing that you have planted. But now the key is, is don't get frustrated and don't give up.
But you can hold on, or if you hold on in there and don't get frustrated and don't quit, then the word of God is telling me that it will get better. Oh, it has to get better. It has to get better because if God said it, then it is so. If God has spoken it, then it will come to pass. And so now the encouraging word for all of us here right now is that it will get better. It will be all right. And eventually all of this will come together for God's glory and for my good. But now, the troubling part for all of us is the next part of this verse where it says, in due season. In due season. In due season. Because now, what the Bible tells us, to everything there is a time and a season. Matter of fact, in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1 through 4, it says, to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven, a time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, and a time to pluck up that which is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, and a time to mourn and a time to dance. So here's the thing. Everything in life is just a collection of time and seasons that this is a season that you're in right now, but one day this season will be up in due time. So now it's not a matter of anything else, but just time that eventually God will turn this thing around in due season. So now what that means for us is that if everything comes down to a season, I have to make sure that I don't die in the wrong season. Because if you die in your current season, then you may miss the season that God has for you to flourish. That if you give up and quit now in this season, then you may miss the time that God has for you to be promoted. That if you give up too soon, then you may miss the window of time that God has allocated for you to be on the top. But we have to know that everything in life is about a time and a season. So now what I would say to everybody here, don't get discouraged if it doesn't happen today. And don't get discouraged if it doesn't happen tomorrow. And don't get discouraged if it doesn't happen the next day. And don't get discouraged if it doesn't happen the week after that. Because the way you have to look at it is that if it didn't happen yesterday, and if it didn't happen today, and if it doesn't happen tomorrow, then all that means is that I'm one day closer to it actually coming to pass. So don't think about how long it's taken, but just think that, God, you're just inching me a day closer to the harvest that you have intended for me to reap in your due season. So the message that I have for everybody here is just hang in there. Hang in there. I know it's hard. I know you get tired. I know you get weary. But as it says in Isaiah, verse 28, chapter 40, hast thou not known, hast not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord of the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary. So God never gets weary, even though we do. But now what the word continues to say is there is no searching of his understanding, for he giveth power to the faint that he giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increaseth the sh their strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But the scripture that I love to book in all of this says, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. Here it is right now as I bring this part to a close, or this message to a close. Hang in there right now in the name of Jesus. I'm speaking directly into your life right now. Hang in there. Don't give up because your due season is a matter of time. 
It's only a matter of time before God opens up the things that have been closed. It's only a matter of time before God introduces you to the right person. It's only a matter of time before God brings the opportunity to your way. Keep doing well as you are doing. Keep studying. Keep praying. Keep trusting. Keep encouraging. Keep loving. And so just believe God that God, within a matter of his time, is bringing everything together for you. I'm encouraging you right now. But now the only way that this is necessary or the only way that this comes to pass is if you understand the God that made this promise for all of us to live up under. Now he has sent his son, Jesus Christ, to bridge the gap between us and God. He sent his son, Christ, into this world to die for all of our sins. And so now once he's died for our sins, through that death, now God has given us access to all of his promises, to all the things that he's unveiled to us through his word in time and in eternity. And all he asks is that we come unto him. I'm going to give an invitation of salvation for somebody here today. In case you've heard this message today, which talks about a relationship with God or a partnership or a relationship, a covenant relationship with Jesus Christ. And so now you know that God has been speaking to you. You know that God has been tapping you on your shoulder, but you've yet to really submit and surrender. I want to urge you that it's critical that you do that right now. I'm encouraging you right now. Take an opportunity to say, Father, I yield myself to you. That God, I surrender my all to you. Now, here's what I want to do just real quickly. Um, if this is you, I just want to lead you through a brief prayer that can start this process for you. If this is you and you want to pray and you want to give your heart unto the Lord, just repeat after me by saying, Father, I need you. Forgive me for all of my sins. Come into my heart. Father, I need you. Forgive me for all of my sins and come into my heart. I'll say it one more time. Father, forgive me. I need you. I need you. Forgive me. Come into my heart. So listen, pray that prayer right now with everything that you have in you. Now, if this is you, you're ready to start this conversation, this journey of salvation with God. There is a number that is flashing at the bottom of the screen right now. I don't want you to wait any longer. Call that number right now. Call that number. And we will have a minister on the other line that is picking up. And they're ready to start this conversation with you, to pray with you, and to get you to that place to where you have truly surrendered yourself and your life to the Lord. Now, that's for salvation. But you could be somebody you said, I've given my heart unto the Lord years ago, many times ago in my life. But life has caused you to drift away from the will of God because you got tired. Because you got tired. And so now you just want to rededicate your life unto the Lord. If you want to rededicate your life unto the Lord, listen, we want to pray with you as well. Call that same number and let the minister know that you just want to hit the reset button. The good news is for you is that no matter how many times you need to come back to the Lord, he will welcome you back as if you never left. The call is for salvation, rededication. Now the third call I'm opening up for you, everybody here too. Just in case you realize that this is a ministry that God wants you to plant your feet in. You're disconnected. You're not a part of a church family. You're not being pastored. You're not in fellowship with other believers. If this is you and you want to join our church, we would absolutely love to have you. The same is for you. Call this number. Call this number right now. Salvation, rededication, and to join our church. Now, as the Spirit of God is moving in your house and in your mind right now, use this, these moments to meditate on what the Lord is doing. And also, I'll add, if you just want prayer, we have ministers that are ready and able to pray with you too as well. So as God is moving, I want to call back up the music team so they can lead us through this time.
you free. He will make you free. He will make you free. He will set you free. He will set you free. He will set you free. Amen. So once again, listen, stay connected with us on our website, www.insidenewzion.org. If you are in need of any of the invitations that I gave, prayer, salvation, rededication, church membership, call the number. We are waiting to connect with you. I want to thank everybody once again for joining us for another 10 a.m. service. Uh, this was a good morning. We're glad you shared it with us here today. Now, also, I just want to mention here, too, for everybody here. Uh, we've been asking for good news and, and God has blessed us with some good news that we want to share to all of our uh, members here at New Zion or those who are just watching too. So thankfully last week we had a young couple that made a decision to join or unite in holy matrimony. And so that is Anthony and Kaya Felder. You'll see their picture flash across the screen right now. So we celebrate with them. We thank God for that good news. And I believe you have good news too as well. So listen, we are in a difficult time right now and we need to hear how God is blessing. We want to hear how God is blessing you. So if you have some good news, email us at info at insidenewzion.org. Again, info at insidenewzion.org. And so we can praise God with you and for you. Amen. All right. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling, neighbors that you fall in the presence of his glory and with exceeding joy to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power now and forevermore. God, we love you and we thank you. And God, we will hang in there because we know that you hung in there with us. In Jesus name. Amen. God bless you all. Have a great week.